ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا يا رب العالمين we thank Allah Azza wa Jalla and praise Him Subhanahu wa Taala. We ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to make us of those who are grateful to Him, and they don't deny the blessings of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Allahumma amin. Coming back to our topic, the explanation of the book, important matters for every Muslim, and we reached to the second lesson talking about the conditions of La ilaha illallah, conditions of this word of Tawheed, which we live for it and die for it. That's the word of oneness for Allah Azza wa Jal, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we mentioned three of those conditions last week. We talked about three. And I hope you will remember those three. We said there are eight conditions. Some scholars say seven. And some they added eight. We're going to explain eight, inshallah ta'ala. There are conditions, and we mentioned the words of the scholars that uh, we know that the the key for entering Jannah is what? La ilaha illallah. But uh, that key needs to have its ridges, its teeth. And the teeth of that key to open the door of Jannah, it's these conditions of La ilaha illallah that each one of us, every single Muslim, need to know these conditions and to apply it in his daily life. Where do we get these conditions? Nowhere else except for the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as the scholars they have put, everything that has a delil, a proof, either from the Qur'an or the Sunnah, or both of them, from the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we mentioned before three conditions. The first one was al-ilmu al-munafi lil-jahil. Knowledge that it is against the ignorance. Knowledge about the word la ilaha illallah. Understanding the meaning then knowing about it. Know that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. Second was al-yaqeen al-munafi lishak. Yaqeen, certainty. We are certain, we have no doubts that Allah is the only one who is worthy to be worshipped. Subhanallah. Nobody else and nothing beside him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Third condition of la ilaha illallah. We said al-ikhlas المنافي للشرك والرياء الإخلاص sincerity for that word sincerity for Allah to make your deen only on only for Allah your religion only purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and which opposes shirk associated parts with Allah and riya which is the shirk al-asghar the small the minor shirk riya to show up that's the pose so these are the three conditions we shall not complete the other conditions. The fourth condition, truthfulness which negates untruthfulness. Sidq. To say this word and you are truthful in what you are saying. Truthful in what you are saying and you are negating or against and opposing any lie. So this is for the person to say it truly from his heart. From his heart, as it says, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, There is no one who testifies that nothing has the right to be worshipped except Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the messenger of Allah, so that la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, sincerely from his heart, meaning truthfully from his heart except that Allah will make that person or make fire impermissible for him will make fire haram for that person meaning he will not enter the hell fire so what do you get from the hadith the proof Sidqan min qalbi. the prophet mentioned who says this word don't just say la ilaha illallah tell us you're done no Sidqan, you have to be truthful in what you're saying you have to believe in what you're saying you have to trust what the words of Allah and the words of the prophet so the Prophet ﷺ, regarding or according to this hadith, he made it as a condition 
for the person to say it truthfully with sincerity and uh, with truth in his heart to say that what is said is said or truthfulness is that your words are the same like what you believe you say something but uh, that it, it is it is what you believe in your heart not saying something which you don't believe it in your heart because the person who says something with his tongue only without believing what's that word what is he saying and what it entails in his heart that person is considered what a hypocrite that person is considered munafiq Allah Azza says about this إذا جاءك المنافقون قالوا نشهد إنك لا رسول الله when the munafiqeen the hypocrites they come to your Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they said what did they say we testify we are witnesses that you are messenger of Allah are they saying it truthfully no they don't believe they believe that in, in their heart that they they, they were believers considered but they were munafiqeen Allah know what's in their hearts we bear witness that you are Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This means that the statement on their tongues is what? Against truth. It's a lie. And they do not believe it in their hearts. So whoever says it in his in, well, with his tongue, why all in his heart does not believe that, that entails that the person is considered a liar. And that statement, which is in this case, La ilaha illallah, is not going to be beneficial for him. It's not going to benefit him neither in dunya, Neither here after. In dunya, we may believe him because we don't, we cannot open his heart if he believes or not. But hereafter, first of all, before when the hereafter starts after his death, in the grave, when the Munkar and Nakir is gonna come and ask him, What do you know about this person? What what is your religion? What is well, who is your Lord? What is your religion? What do you know about this person? What he's gonna say? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Because he doesn't know. Allah answered that even if he used to say it with his tongue, Allah will take from his heart and he cannot say it. Will tie his tongue. He cannot say those words that Allah is my Lord. Because he used not to believe it. He used just to, to go with the believers, Muslim, Muslims and me. Oh, I'm, I'm okay with you. But always the munafiqeen, where do they spread? They spread when the Islam is strong. When the Islam is strong. When Islam is weak, munafiqeen, they, they don't have to... Uh, uh, they don't uh, they don't spread and uh, they they don't say they, they because they they don't fear any anything so that's why they said in the, in the medina when islam was strong that's why there were a lot of munafiqeen uh, the hypocrites and they, they because they wanted to destroy islam from inside that was the fourth condition which was a sidhu truthfulness which negates lie the fifth condition of la ilaha illallah is al mahabba Love. Love which negates hate. What is that? What do we mean by that? The person who says the statement La ilaha illallah has to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has to love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has to love the religion of Islam, this Islam, has to love the Muslims who say La ilaha illallah, who establish the commandments of Allah and observe the limits that Allah has set. For the people. These people, Muslims, who believe in love, la ilaha illallah, at the same time, they must hate whatever opposes the statement, la ilaha illallah. They must hate whatever is against la ilaha illallah. And what negates it among them is what? Shirk. Muslim hates shirk associated parts of Allah. Muslim hates kufr, disbelief. From the proofs of, of, of his uh, love or from the, from the proofs or the deleeds that love for la ilaha illallah and what it entails it's uh it's a condition of, of for, for it we have the ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَا يَتَّخِذُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ among the mankind are some people who take or worship others beside Allah as rivals. They love them, those rivals, those uh, idol, uh, those idols. They love them as they love Allah. Same thing, equal. But those who believe, the believers, may Allah make us from those, they love Allah more than anything else. They love Allah more than anything and anyone else, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is this? Because the believers or the love that the believers have for Allah is pure. 
is 100% pure love. There is nothing mixed with it. No dirtiness. As the mushrikeen, they may love Allah, but at the same time, they love those idols that they worship may be equal and the same thing. For this reason, the day of the judgment, when they enter the hellfire, what would, would, would they say? Tallahi in kunna lafi walalin mubeel idh nusawikum bi rabbil alameen By Allah, we are truly in a manifest error. We are error. We are world with dalal. When we held you, false gods, as equals in worship with the Lord of all that exists, with Rabbil Alameen. What we take from here is that because they made Allah and their gods equal, they didn't love Allah as to, uh, supposed to, to be loved, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and not worship others than Him and beside Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, what do we get from these proofs? We get that the statement, La ilaha illallah, will not benefit you, will not benefit any Muslim except. If the person has that condition, loves la ilaha illallah, loves that there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has a, a, a genuine love for the, for the statement, has a genuine love for everything which contains and entails in that statement, including tawheed, love the tawheed, oneness of Allah, love the deen to be done and to be dedicated and attributed only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and love the people who are muahideen, love the people who put in practice and their love for Allah. Thus, love the people who worship Allah alone sincerely and they don't commit any uh, uh, shirk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the beautiful dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, regarding love for that, is mentioned the dua in Hadith Anas, uh, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in another hadith, he's mentioned, the dua, Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak wa hubba man yuhibbuk wa hubba amalin yuqarribuni ila hubbuk. Oh Allah, I ask you for your love. Meaning, I ask you so I love you. And the love of those who love you. I ask you so I can love everybody who loves you. And the love of the actions that will draw me close to your love. Any action that brings me closer to you, sujood, any action that you, I do, that I know that brings me closer to you, I, I ask you, Allah, to make me love that action. That's the dua of the Prophet Wasallam. In the hadith, Anas, beautiful hadith, Prophet Wasallam said, ثَلَاثٌ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ وَجَدَ حَلَوَةَ الْإِيمَانِ أَنْ يَكُونَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِمَّا سِوَاهُمَا وأن يحب المرأة لا يحبه إلا لله وأن يكون وأن لا وأن يكره أن يعود في الكفر كما يكره أن يقذف في النار. There are three things. Pay attention. Three things. If you want to be from real believers who taste their iman, there are three things which, if a person finds them in himself, he has found the sweetness of the iman. You want to find the sweetness of the iman? Make sure you have these three things. He has found the sweetness of the iman. The first one. When Allah and his messenger are dearer and more beloved to him than anything else. If Allah and his messenger are more beloved to you as a person than anything else, Alhamdulillah, this is the first path, first step to be of those who feel and get the taste and the sweetness of the Iman. Second, when he loves a person, the person, you love a person, your brother for the sake of Allah, for no other reason, just for the sake of Allah. I love your brother for the sake of Allah. When you love your brother for the sake of Allah, not for any interest of this worldly life, not for money, not because he will help you with something, not because he uh, is do something good to you, will benefit you in any kind. No. I love you only because you are a believer. You love Allah and his messenger, and I love you because of that. You pray, I love you because of that. You give sadaqah, I love you because of that. You are good to your parents, I love you because of that. Just for that, because you are a believer. And the third, that... A person, when he hates to go back to kufr, disbelief, after Allah has saved him, the same way that he would hate to be thrown into fire. Anybody, anybody wants to be thrown into fire? Nobody. Even the disbelievers, they don't want to be thrown into fire. But are we doing that work to not be thrown into fire or not? That is a dis that uh, people are distinguished. So if the person loves or he hates to go back to disbelief, 
as he hastes to be thrown the hellfire, that's a sign, the third sign, that you will feel the sweetness of the Iman. You'll feel the taste and the sweetness of the Iman. So here the scholars say that what we have, we have three matters, three affairs here. First, we have Asl, foundation. We have Tafriya, subsidiary matters, which is less. And we have opposing or negating what opposes them. The first one, Al Asl, Hubbullah, loving Allah as a foundation. The foundation is the love of Allah Azza. You build everything upon that. The subsidiary matter is to love what Allah loves. Everything that matters, every, the person that Allah loves, the, the actions that Allah loves, you love them. So that's the second thing. And the third is negating what Allah hates and what opposes them. To hate, to return to kufr, as Allah Azza has saved the person, and the same way that he were, you would hate to, be to uh, be thrown into hellfire. So that was the fifth condition of La ilaha illallah, which was to love Allah, love his messenger, to love the word and what it entails, and to hate whatever opposes the tawheed and the word La ilaha illallah. Number six, or the sixth condition, is Al Inqiyadu. Al Inqiyadu, Al Munafil Compliance which negates refusal. What do we mean by that? Compliance. What is Islam? It's compliance. It's submission. Obedience to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anta Muslim. You are a Muslim. You are obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are submitting to it. So this is compliance for la ilaha illallah. That you submit to Allah, comply with his legislation, the sharia of Allah azza, and obey his commands. For this reason, Allah azza wa says, and whoever submits his face to Allah, his whole part of it, his face to Allah, while he is a Muslim, what does he do? He's a doer, and while he's a Muslim, while, while he does good deeds, has grasped the most trustworthy handhold. And the most trustworthy handhold, Urwatul Uthqa, we mentioned before, is what? La ilaha illallah. Urwatul Uthqa, the most trustworthy handhold, is the statement, La ilaha illallah. And Allah Azza wa says, وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ All of these are adillah, are evidences for this, that you submit to this word. وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ And re return repentance to your Lord and submit. The word submit. Islam is all compliance and submission. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who is well as the wajal. So that means the person need to submit and obey to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The believers, what do they say in the hear the words of Allah? Sami'na wa ata'ana. We hear and obey. We hear and obey, not only by their tongues. We can say every day, uh, all day long, we hear and obey. I mean Allah as well tells us to, to not deal with riba, we deal with riba. What is the obey? We hear and disobey. It, that, that it tells you. Even if you say we hear and obey. Allah Azza tells to our sisters to put the hijab. Yes, I believe in Allah and, and I put uh, and uh, I will obey and it comes. You as a father or you as a brother don't, don't care about or uh, a husband your wife how is coming out without hijab or not. The sisters in the, in the first place. So we hear and obey. That's the word of the believers. To follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The seventh condition القبول أو القبول المنافي للرد acceptance to accept the word لا إله إلا الله and to oppose that this acceptance opposes the rejection this means that we accept the statement of لا إله إلا الله and what it entails including the توحيد of Allah so making الدين خالصا لله to make the religion sincerely only for Allah and Allah as well says about the condition of the مشركين explains us. Not like the believers. Truly, when it was said to them, to the disbelievers, the mushrikeen in the time of the Prophet, and nowadays, the same thing. When it was said to them, they understood the meaning of. 
Nothing has the right to be worshipped except Allah. What do they do? They became arrogant. They puffed themselves up with pride. And they said, are we going to abandon our gods for the sake of a mad poet? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They are considered the Prophet as a mad poet. He's just bringing poetry. He said, how are we going to leave all these gods, 360 gods that we're worshipping, we leave it for the words of, of yours? Who are you? We will leave. This is what the, how they, they became mustakbirin. So in this, the believer, it's the opposite of that. The believer is humble. The believer accepts everything that comes from Allah. When he says, La ilaha illallah, there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the believer accepts it and makes the, the religion only, on, only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The eighth condition and the last one is al kufru bit tawabit. Disbelieving in that which is worshipped other than Allah Azza wa Jalla. Disbelieving everything that is worshipped other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa says, as the evidence for that, فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ إِسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَةِ Whoever disbelieves in a tagut, tagut is everything which is worshipped other than Allah Azza wa Jalla, or besides Allah. And believes in Allah has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that will never break. And we said that is La ilaha illallah, the shahada, the testimony of faith. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man qala la ilaha illallah. That's the eighth condition. Man qala la ilaha illallah. Wa kafara bima yu'badu min dun illah harum a'maluhu wa damu. Whoever says nothing has the right to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The condition and disbelieves in what is worshipped besides Allah, then his wealth and life are sacred. He's considered Muslim. His wealth and life are sacred. So these are, as we mentioned, all eight are the required guidelines for the acceptance of the statement, La ilaha illallah, in order to, for you to be from the faizin, from the success, successful ones in dunya and hereafter. And the person that is this individual must believe in all of them, must have all of these conditions, and must disbelieve in everything which is worshipped other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he must be or disavow himself and yakuna bari'an from shirk and its people. Allah azza wa says, innani bara'un mimma ta'budun illa alladhi fatarin. Right, that's about Ibrahim alayhi salam. Verily I'm innocent of what you worship from the idols, except for he, Allah azza wa jal, who created me. Allah azza wa says, قَدَ كَانَتْ لَكُمْ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ فِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ إِذْ قَالُوا لِقَوْمِهِمْ إِنَّا بُرَآءٌ مِّنْكُمْ وَمِمَّا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ دِينِ اللَّهِ كَفَرْنَا بِكُمْ وَقَدْ وَبَدَا بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمُ الْعَدَاوَةُ وَالْبَغْضَاءُ أَبَدًا حَتَّى تُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَحْدًا Indeed, there has been an excellent example for you in Ibrahim. For us, the example of Ibrahim is the best example. In the Ibrahim, Allah says about Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam kana ummah. He was ummah, a nation, and he was in tawheed. Even one person. In Ibrahim and those with him, when they said to their people, Verily we are free from you, and whatever you worship besides Allah. The eighth condition. We have rejected you. And there has started between us and you hostility and hatred forever until you believe in Allah, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. These conditions, as we mentioned before, the Sheikh has put in as a poetry. Knowledge, certainty, sincerity, and your truthfulness will love, compliance, and acceptance of it. And an eighth one is added, and it is for you to disbelieve in those things which are deified and worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some other scholars, they consider only seven, not the eighth one, uh, because they consider the eighth one, which is disbelief, had to be in the heart, not to, to be said, to be in the heart. That's one of the scholars that do that is shaykh. Uh, Hafid al-Hakami, rahmatullahi alayhi, from the greatest scholars of Islam, in his beautiful book, Sulam al-Wasul, he said, These the conditions have been confined to seven, and they have been mentioned in truth in a, in a text of revelation. The person who says it with his tongue will not benefit from it unless he fulfills his condition. 
العلم واليقين والقبول والانقياد فدر ما أقول knowledge certainty acceptance submission understand what I say والصدق والإخلاص والمحبة وفقط الله لما أحبه and truthfulness sincerity and love may Allah guide you to what he loves he explained that a beautiful book Ma'arij al-Qabool is a very beautiful book uh, to be uh, read and understood from it so these are the eight conditions for, of La ilaha illallah. May Allah as well make us of those who understand, who know, who memorize these conditions, who understand these conditions and put that in daily life. To love La ilaha illallah and to work with La ilaha illallah in their life and to, to uh, teach that to the, their, their family and others so we can be, be of those who are of the people of Tawheed and La ilaha illallah to be resurrected with the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, with the Siddiqeen, with Shuhada, with Salihin, with Hasuna, Ula'ika, Rafiqa. And how great company are them. Ask Allah Azza wa to grant us beneficial knowledge and a righteous uh, action. Allahumma ameen. La ilaha illa anta subhanak. Inna kunna min al-zalimeen. Ya muqallib al-qulub. Thabit qulubana ala dinik. Wa ya musarrif al-qulub. Sarrif qulubana ala ta'atik. Subhanak Allahum bihamdik. Nashhadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubilaik. Sallallahu anna nabiya. Wa sallallahu anna nabiya.